welcome YouTubers to another podcast brought to you by Dave and myself. And we're going to kick this podcast off with some interesting news. Respawn Entertainment's game could be exclusively to Xbox new platform. Dave, what do you got to say about that? Some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, it is bullshit. Anyway, um, well, it does suck for the fact that, you know, um, Respawn is, you know, the outcome of Infinity War breaking off from Activision. Um, I forget their names, you know them. Jason West and Vincent Zampella. Yep. Um, they left, they made Respawn, and everyone was with them. All right, cool, way to yeah, stick it exactly. to the man. Yeah, yep, yep. And then, to hear this news, uh, I actually heard it from you. I didn't even know. Yeah, I, I, found it, I found the article on IGN, and I came across it. It just, it kind of like, it left a kind of a sour taste, because was like, man, that now you're alienating those Sony supporters you had um, when you say you're going to support, you know, the next Xbox. It just, it sucks because, you know, I understand, you know, the always online thing. That's still rumored, but the more, yeah. the more time kind of passes by, that almost seems almost confirmed. And this game um, kind of almost confirms it as well, because in the article it, it said something about always being online, and yeah. that's probably why they jumped over But anyway... It can be, like, kind of, can be like, kind of like Destiny, right? Yeah, it... it can have that uh, whole MMO, always online, multiplayer, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't like it because, you know, you had everyone's support, and then out of, now you get this, and smart smart on Xbox part, you know? Uh, of course. Of course. But, uh, for the gamers, man, we're, we're ready to usher in a new... Uh, it kind of forces me to buy Xbox's new piece of shit console. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what it does, you know. Like, because I'm a fan of Respawn Entertainment's uh, crew. You know, they got big eyes from COD for number two. And now, for me to play their, you know, gorgeous new game, I'm gonna have to shell my hundred dollars to a, a company and a, and, a, and a system that I'm gonna despise. So. That's that, that was Microsoft's intent. It was to get guys like me and you here, um, for PlayStation gamers to go to somewhere we don't want to go, right? So. And I, I mean, I started off with the 360, and I loved it. And then I shifted over to PS3, but I loved that more. And with the PS4, I mean, I thought it was perfect. And I don't see myself returning to Microsoft uh, until, you know, um, I feel I think what killed for me, sorry to cut you off there, Dave, what killed for me for the Xbox was the ads. The ads and the new dashboard. That's what killed it for me, man. You know? I, I just, um... I don't know exactly what why I jumped out, but I mean it, it was just kind of oh they just weren't pushing new IPs. Sony had you know Heavy Rain or pushing Uncharted at the time, and all this other stuff that I, I liked that they were doing that. Um, but as far as uh, the whole respawn thing, you know, um, man, that that just that that you know sucks a little bit. Um, probably making a lot of money uh, from whatever Microsoft paid them. Um, so it's it's a bummer. Because people on on the Sony, you know, side of the board that were looking forward to what Respawn was bringing to the table, because I know I was, um, just to hear now that it's going to be an exclusive to Microsoft really kind of just uh, not even rained, almost almost like a little moist shit on my parade, you know. <laughs> it's just kinda, <laughs> so it, it just it's just it just really sucks. Um, yeah. But kudos to Microsoft for you know having this exclusive thing that, you know, got at us, the Sony guys. Um, but... Kinda, it was really uh, kind of out of left field, you know. Mm -hmm. really yeah. You know I mean? it, was, it was actually right, maybe a little while before we actually started recording this podcast, so it was, it was news to me. When you said it, I almost didn't believe it until I saw the argument yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, what do you else want to touch on next? Well, okay, that sucked. Oh, hey, the Aliens lawsuit. That's all. Fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know this when this game was first announced, you know back, you know because this game went through a lot of rough development. You know, first it was on PS2, announced back in the day PS2, I think around 2001 or 2002, back back in then, and then it was put on hold or canceled. Then you know Gearbox picked it up, and then Sega was going to publish it, and then you know, and so on and so on, and then they were going to bring something really good. Towards the uh, the alien fans, you know, it was gonna it was gonna be having original cast me cast members, voice actors from the alien films. It was gonna be a, a, a sequel to to the, the second alien film through the game, you know. So you had the voice actors, you had this potential great sequel and story continuation from the second film. You had this great looking demo, and then all of a sudden it fucking flopped. 
Um, yeah, but I, I want to think, well, I think the game mainly flopped um, due to gameplay um, versus, like, you know, a, a bad story. Um, I didn't play the game, you know, I, I waited for the reviews and I saw, you know, how horrible they were. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know. Um, and this whole lawsuit, from, from what I, I can gather uh, so far, was more along, you know, um, the early kind of demos, not not even like a beta. But the demos yeah. weren't, weren't, weren't up to par with the final product. Yeah, and for me that, that seems a little weird. I mean, demo plays um, usually are, are kind of crappy, you know, um, typically. Um, yeah. And they, they make sure they tell you it's a demo, don't, you know, don't start thinking this game's going to suck, this is exactly. kind of... Um, but for for someone to say that the demo w- was better than like the final product, I mean, that, that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of scary. Um, for for um, I don't know. I want to say for the lawsuit for the fact that you know uh, well, the game was a complete letdown to the Alien fans. It had yeah. so much potential. I had the voice actors. I had the setting. I had the potential of being the true sequel to a movie. You know, the demos looked great, and then you know. What happened? I think so many people actually also really like this universe too. You know, um, I had a, uh, it, it's such, everyone knows AVP, you know, it, it's not just something that, you know, just for the hardcore, you know, this is one of those, um, there's, there's people that grew up watching the alien movies and stuff. Exactly. Um, so, so this is gonna, you know, kind of everyone kind of, kind of had their eyes on this because this wasn't just, you know, another game. This was a game based on a movie that we've all, you know, kind of grew up watching. And um, I think people really wanted to see it um, succeed. I was getting a little excited, too. I saw some of the stuff. I was like, all right, pretty cool. And now um, Gearbox and Sega are sued for false advertising. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, but is, is this really false advertising, though? I mean, it was a demo version um, were they telling people, I mean, you know, in a demo version, it's not going to be like the end product. And they did even, they also had a beta, I'm pretty sure, that, didn't they, before they released the game? So there was a demo. I don't think so, no. They didn't? Oh, um, no. Hmm. Well, I, I thought they did. But still, I mean, it, when it's advertised as a demo, I, I don't think, I don't think it's the, the right of someone to press charges, and that, that kind of sucks. Well, no, because, like, the usually demos looks kind of like the final product what it's going to look like you know if the final product doesn't even nearly look even and close to the demo it looks like what the hell happened that's the problem here yeah yeah I, I, yeah I kind of see I was kind of drifting a little different but yeah um shit yeah the, and the, then the, and, and then you get the marine uh, the Colin Marines co-op developer filing, filing for bankruptcy protection now oh yeah yep um, I, that art to put your attention too you know so yep. From what I understand, those guys have been uh, struggling a little bit for, you know, they also the same guys that made Section 8, and I had a couple guys on my friends list that were really pumped for that game. Um, they ended up buying it, and I was like, I remember this was my exact mentality. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to wait about a week and see if these guys are still playing it. And they weren't, like, a week later. They were so amped for this, they kept telling me to get it. And, you know, a week later, they kind of just threw it off to the side and started playing some other stuff. So, um... Is it difficult for like these guys to kind of rebound from a game, you know, that wasn't, you know, successful, and then you get thrown on this other project? Do you think some of that went into the whole, like, like kind of into their heads, like in the back of like, oh, we don't want to screw up again, but at the same time, mm-hmm. makes them nervous, so they can't do the product, they can't like, you know, stay focused on like staying positive, and maybe like, you know, get kind of that, that little jittery, and you make mistakes and stuff. Um, I don't know. It just kind of it, it sucks. The, the lawsuit thing, though. This is this is. Uh, I read a few articles that point out that this might also be bad for the industry because, like, imagine being able to go to E3 or any convention, playing a demo, um, kind of liking the demo, see where they're going, but then it be so different from the end product, or not so different, but different enough to where you're not satisfied. Like, and then you're going to be pressing charges. It's just like, um, is every are the consumers going to start suing these companies just because the end result is not what you know 
they they play at E3. It's just it's just a mess. You know, it really is a mess. You know, the the, the good said the game had all that potential. You know, and now you know the, the developers are filing for bankruptcy. The, the, the two, the, the other, you know, Sega and Gearbox are getting sued, and it's just a complete mess. And it's just, I just hope. You know, something good comes out of this, but also, you know, maybe the publishers and the developers need to wake up, smell the coffee, and say, "Hey, man, if you're gonna show us a product and then give us a final product that doesn't even look like anything that you've shown before, don't sell it. Don't give it to us." Mm-hmm. So, um, I think that I think that's all for that, man. You know? Yeah, it's 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 kind of I don't know. I I just hope it just kind of just dies out. And nothing ends up happening because I mean these guys already took a hit with a shitty game. Less than they need is, you know, getting like a lawsuit on them. But hey, um, hopefully you know studios kind of uh, learn to be a little bit more solid and well polished with the end results. But sometimes that comes down to publishers and being bullied to release this game now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think of the uh, Bioware article? Bioware. Oh. <laughs> Um, I love beer, <laughs> so um, it's, it's just kind of uh, it's kind of one weird. Of the, I mean, one of the Cl- co-founders is going to beer now. <laughs> yeah, it, Cliffy B left, you know, Epic, um, and I thought he was done. I thought he was, you know, he, he was going to go off and do bigger, better things. Um, but he's still kind of he's still kind of in the game industry. He still tweets. Um, he's even going to do his own studio, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so he didn't jump too far off. Like no. he, like I thought he was he was going to do something else. But no, he stayed in the industry. So um, the co-founder for Bioware, I forget his name. Um, I should probably look some stuff up. Um, but anyway, he, he's he's going to try and you know make some beer. Um, so this is a complete different kind of field. Um, I think it's pretty cool. And um, I'm just uh, I wonder um, who do you do you think that he is uh, kind of fed up with the industry or do you think he just wants to try something new for himself? Well, I think the reason why he went to you know probably like doing the beer kind of thing is maybe because he was just fed up with the gaming stream maybe, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you're getting bullied by publishers all the time, and then. Uh, Websites like Metacritic, that, you know, have all these uh, angry uh, gamers going on their on their bad days, writing reviews you know, about a shit game that you know is not really that shitty, but they're just having a bad day. You know, they, they overamp whatever the heck they're doing. Oh, but at the same time, do you think um, the gaming industry is being hurt by piracy too? So do you think, you know? Well, a lot, I think, let, don't forget, you know, they were doing Mass Effect 3. You know, Mass Effect 3 ending didn't do so well, and then they did Star Wars Over Republic, and Star Wars Over Republic was $200 million, which was the most expensive get, computer game MMO to be made. And that did not make the profit that, that you know, Bioware wanted to make, and it really pissed off EA. So, you know, the co-finders said, fuck there for out, and then, you know, it, the whole, you know, EA kind of killed Bioware, in a yeah. sense. You know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, so uh, kind of being bullied by, by the publisher and then the expectations of us, you know, the gamer consumer. Um, it just it just kind of sucks that I feel like uh, as gamers uh, we want so much that, you know, um, we get disappointed. The, the Mass Effect ending, uh, I played the trilogy and, you know, I kind of uh, I kind of saw why, you know, a lot of people were irritated because I did play, you know, the whole, all three games. Like it even says here, Bioware's un- underperforming MMO. Star Wars of the Republic. You know what I mean? So, underperforming. You know? it's, it's just expectations are so high. Um, so, that, that probably puts more pressure and probably stress on some of these guys, you know? So, why not kind of take a step well, back? I think, I think that because Star Wars of the Republic didn't do as well as they thought it would, I think this pushed the co-founders of Bioware out of there. Yeah, you know, that, that, was, like, yeah. that was just kind of the straw. They're just like, oh, well. Fuck, fuck you, EA. You know, <laughs> fuck this, bro. You know, and then, you know, he went. He just went to beer. He does his own thing. It's like I relaxed. With, it's like he just like afterwards. He just got out of the meeting and he went to go get a beer. And it's like this is so relaxing. I should try and sell something. Yeah, trying to my own beer. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh. Oh man, public. So yeah, like you know, I hope Greg does really well with this whole beer thing. You know, he left Bioware. He was one of the co-founders and. 
You know, my hat's off to him. You know, he wants to do something different. Mm -hmm. well, loving what he's doing, that's great. Even though, you know, Bioware and the, the founders of Bioware and what Bioware has done for the game industry, you know, Star, Star Wars is open public, uh, the old games, you know, the, um, the first Star Wars old public game, uh, and uh, they did that, and they did the Mass Effect, and they did the Baldur's Gate, and they did all that other stuff, you know, their stuff will be living on forever. Mm -hmm. Is it a shame that they left the industry? Yes, it is a shame. This Bioware is the co-founders that the original Bioware team they were the great. They made solid RPGs, you know, Neverwinter Nights, you know, and stuff like that. So now we just got, you know, Bioware is just kind of like Infinity War. We've got people there are just, you know, working their jobs. The, the original talent is gone. And that's what publishers do sometimes, man. You know, they, they break up great developers. Mm -hmm. They do. So, uh, but uh, I, knew it was a, I knew something was going to happen. You know, when, I, when I heard $200 million in the, on, on MMO, and uh, you're dealing with EA, and that game's not going to perform or bring back half that back, EA's going to not take that lightly. Especially when it has the title Star Wars, man, because that, that's something that you kind of... Dude, that game was in development for years. Yeah. You know, well, I was into them four or five years. people were look I went I got that game at lunch. I was really excited for I'm like Bioware, MMO, Star Wars, the win win situation. This game is gonna go amazing. Right. And then it just bombed, was enough content and so on and so on. So it's 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 very a sad story in game. You know? mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? You, gonna do? <laughs> you kinda gotta go home? <laughs> look Greg, and look Greg that beer is good. <laughs> Have some with you, but um, that's your uh, future endeavors. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if I happen to find a, a bottle of it, I'll definitely buy it, and uh, hopefully it brings me more satisfaction than some uh, Mass Effect re-ending. Yes. <laughs> hey, the extended cut, the extended Mass Effect three add-on there made the game a lot better than. Oh yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but let's not get in the whole Mass Effect discussion here. Right. <laughs> no, that's the one for a while. Well, let's turn it over to the PlayStation side. Watch Dogs getting PlayStation exclusive content. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Now, Watch Dogs, when I first saw this last year at E3, I was blown away by the demo. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, an open world where you could hack and use your phone and do all this hacking. And I was like, holy shit, you know? So now that the PlayStation, uh, they say the PS3 and PS4 versions of Watch Dogs will receive 60 minutes of exclusive content. That's a big deal. That's a good chunk. And that's for PlayStation only. So Xbox, you can stick it. <laughs> Alright, 60 minutes of exclusive content comes to that game. That game is going to be amazing and it's going to be probably, you know, up there in the game of your chart. It's going to get a lot of awards. Definitely. Well, so. yeah, for me, back going back to E3 last year, um, everyone, all eyes were on Last of Us. We all knew the trailer was going to come and everyone was excited to see the gameplay. Um, and it delivered. Was, 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 it blew everyone out of the cheers, all the claps, all that sweet. But before that, Watch Dogs was announced. No one but you knew. Saw. Yeah, no one knew anything well, about no, it. No one knew it came out of left field. Like, well, yeah. what's this? And I remember watching it, and yeah. my immediate reaction was, holy crap. Hey, man, no one, man. Like, why wasn't anyone talking about this? And then, and then this happened in my head. I was just like, is this going to be better than Last of Us? Because I was so amped for Last of Us that this came out of nowhere, and this kind of almost... Like, well, Last of Us and Watch Dogs are totally two different styles. Yeah, yeah, but it was just... They're not going to affect each other. Th yeah, they won't, but it's just like, as far as like a shock factor, like this like literally just rattles like yeah. my, my brain. It was like, this game literally came out of nowhere. Everyone did. Like, I didn't know what to think of it. I just remembered that it looked really freaking awesome, and I honestly would say... It probably stole E3 last year just this uh, with its trailer and stuff because it really just it was just came out of nowhere like no one expected it and you know so you already got people back and back it up people interested talking about it and then uh, Sony yeah Sony getting the exclusive 60 minutes um, I think is great that's an extra hour um, of gameplay yeah and um, I mean right now people demand like at least almost 10 hour gameplay like the, the, everyone I know like if they get like a good 
10 hours out of a story, then that's the only way that'd be satisfying. Um, yeah. um, so I don't know how long this game is, but Sony got an extra hour. So that's good for Sony and you know, the PS4 guys. And um, it, it's kind of uh, interesting um, that Sony's starting to develop a few more relationships now with uh, some of these publishers. Um, of course, you got the extra 60 minutes. Assassin's Creed 3 had exclusive PlayStation um, yeah. stuff. And uh, EA has been uh, partnering a little bit with uh, Sony as well, giving Battlefield like about a week yeah. ahead of time on some downloads. Yeah. So, so they're, they're trying to hit that you know market there. Yeah. So so Sony's you know they're, they're aiming a little bit at gamers. Respawn got the exclusive or Xbox are exclusive to Respawn, which you know that's their thing. So it's going to be an ugly next gen. Sony gets uh, you know a couple points for this one, and they uh, get a couple points for that one. You know. <laughs> So, I mean, they're, they're, they're slowly kind of shifting stuff. Um, I'm, I'm a little intimidated by Watch Dogs. There's just, like, so much to do, so much, you know, around that phone, man. It controls so much cash. <laughs> that I'm just kind of like, oh, man, yeah. I don't know. Pretty you know, really nice. But it's, it's definitely going to be an insane game, and um, I, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Oh, yeah, I can't either. Uh, more in the PlayStation news, though. Apparently, the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Edition is not coming to the Xbox for 60. Yes, I was actually going to make a video about this, but I, 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 I kind of left it And uh, that is, uh, you know, just another point why the PS3 is better. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the DVD format, it really kicked uh, Xbox 60 in the ass. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Uh, they even said to even bring over Metal Gear Solid 4 to the Xbox, it would be on 7 discs. Yes, that's, that's what I was going to say. DVDs, man. So, you know, when, when, when you know, like I said, so... But uh, that's some more points for uh, PlayStation there, gamers. You know, Metal Gear Solid Legacy Edition is only coming to PlayStation. So I just want to put that out there on the chat. Um, I don't think this is uh, going to be on there, but I remember reading an article that uh, Hideo Kojima actually wanted to bundle, like, I think a comic. I don't know whether it's going to be, like, an online comic or, like, you know, a physical one. But he wanted just something else to throw in this uh, little bundle. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, yeah. But that would have been cool. But yeah, man, one thing that caught me off was when he actually said seven discs. I was just like, I, I, okay, I know there's seven the, discs. The Blu-ray big, the Blu-ray disc is bigger than you know DVD, but I mean, it's just ridiculous that it's going to take That's seven big. discs. How big all four is? Yeah, you know, how four is only on one Blu-ray, but you you trans, you know, transform that one Blu-ray into a DVD format, seven discs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so. yeah, it's seven discs. He, then they kind of mentioned that they might do it, you know, for next gen, d- a different format disc, more room, so it's possible. But for this bundle, I mean, it's good for people like me that haven't really, but you know, I've dipped my feet into the Metal Gear universe, but I haven't really completed, you know, <clears throat> or any uh, or three. Um, so it's it's a cool bundle. But at the same time, um, they said they maybe do it on the next episode. Yeah. Um, not on particular, but maybe next. Year. But do you think people will, will still care? I mean, we're gonna get uh, yeah. Two no, we won't care. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll care more about the next Metal Gear, yeah. like uh, Ground Zero, more. and yeah. you know, yeah. Ground Ground Zeroes, and then there's gonna be Phantom Pain. Those are yeah. two. They've already set two separate Metal Gear games, and um, would it really matter to get this collection? I mean, maybe for the hardcore guys, maybe, maybe for the PlayStation guys. Yeah, definitely. Like I have the Metal Gear Solid HD collection right now, which is. Uh, what is it? Um, two and Snake Eater and um, Peace Walker. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to pick up this to go with that collection. I also got Metal Gear Solid 4. So I'm a big Metal Gear Solid fan. I'm going to get that fun one. So. But, I mean, as far as... Here's another uh, thing. I, I Actually, I think I mentioned in one of my videos. Um, for this bundle, like, one thing I didn't get was... Um, do, do you think this is more... Uh, like, does... I think this benefits more of a PS4 versus the PS3. I mean, I think when the future consoles come out, PS4 and the Xbox 3, um, I feel like this bundle is going to be more for them for the fact that, you know, they're not going to be backwards compatible machines. So, you know, you just buy this nice little hefty bundle, you'll be able to play your games on the PS4. Yeah. Um, right now, we can play all these games um, basically on our PS3, you know, with PS1 Marketplace and stuff. Um, and I just kind of felt like this bundle fit more into a future gen kind of thing than current. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's some sort. Of, maybe they are working on one. I don't know. But I, personally, I feel like this bundle should kind of be more for future than current. 
That's all. Reading Town Cross C, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, more on the PlayStation news, Diablo 3 now. It's going to be officially announced for this fall, PS3. And uh, if you pre-order Diablo 3 PS3, there's like a bonus, apparently. A helm and some extra XP bonus there involved. So uh, that's good, uh, good news for PS3 gamers. You know, Diablo 3 is coming. And uh, if you pre-order it, you get a little goodies there. And you also get a poster, too. <laughs> yeah, I think the poster is through GameStop. I'm not sure if anyone else Oh, yeah, it's through GameStop. You get yeah. GameStop and get, get a new helm and game. Um, I'm looking forward to Diablo 3 on PS3, even though I have on PS3. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we we talked about this, and um, I think everyone kind of feels kind of on the same page here about the 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 marketplace they have. You know, the uh, the um, the auction house. Um, When Diablo 3 first came out, finding gear was special. You you quit it, you found it. Or if I found something for someone else's character, I'd tell them, "Hey, man, I found this." Oh, cool. So we'd be trading stuff. Um, when they added the whole uh, auction house, you know, with real money and they, 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 they actually, it actually killed the game. I read yeah. that article. That auction house actually killed Diablo three. I remember, I remember signing off um, and then signing back on, and then you know everyone I played with would have so much gear, they'd be so much better than my character, and I'd be like, "Whoa, when did you guys find all this stuff?" And I'm like, "Oh, in the auction house, we just we just bought it." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, and then I started buying some of the stuff, but that kind of stopped me from playing as far as like I like the whole hunt man you like finding that new shiny thing and all that stuff so when they kind of took that away and saying oh you can just buy it over here just that kind of sucked and killed the game the good thing is from what we know right now um that's not gonna be on the xbox or I mean the ps3 or ps4 version I don't think they're gonna really there's no auction house yeah and hopefully I mean that is a game changer right there. Um, from what I heard, there's no, uh, of course, no online DRM. You can play the game offline. Um, wow. Um, but right now, I can't confirm, but I'm pretty sure everyone keeps saying there's no auction house. And if there is going to be that one... That would be a big difference. Though. Yeah. That, that would make it a lot more enjoyable to me. Find something else to spend that gold on. I don't care. Uh, or, um, just, like, if, if they can get rid of that, I think that'll sure. make the game last longer yeah, on the console. Yeah, but also it, it, what it also needs too is an expansion pack. Oh yeah. yeah, you know. So you know, Diablo three. You know, it's not a terrible. Game. A lot of people hate it. I didn't hate it. You know, I, I just like thought it. it was shorter than Diablo two. Mm-hmm. And I think once they get some expansion pack out there, it'll make that game better. You know, but a lot of people were demanding more from it than what it really was. It was an action RPG, not an MMO. Right. You know what I mean, it, 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 people thought it was going to be like WoW or something. Where it's like gonna be freaking hooking you on the game for hours and hours and you know years and years on one sixty dollar product. No, it's an action RPG. You know, if you want something that big of a scale, go play World of Warcraft. Right? So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad game, and I, I still every now and then replay the game. It, it's still fun to play. I mean, um, it's a great game. I, I I got the collector disc for PC. I went all out. Um, I was really hyped for it because I played the second game and the first game back in the day. So. Um, this is how new I am to PC. Uh, Diablo 3 was my first PC, like, actual buy that wasn't a download. Like, I actually went to the store to pick it up. Um, so, I mean, I, I actually, I took kind of a, because I, I, I wasn't, like, I'm a big console guy. I grew up on console. So for me to actually go there and, like, all right, I'm going to get, I don't know too much about Diablo, but, you know, I'll get this game, see what it's about. And, you know, I played it, fell in love with it. I'm one of those noobs that like, yeah, I don't care. It's a good game, you know. But yeah, there's. I don't think there's anything really too wrong with the game, other than you know, just the fact that I yeah, lost no. interest. Yeah, yeah, I lost interest in finding gear for the fact that I can just go and buy some better stuff. Yeah. I think the last thing we're gonna cover in this podcast. I think a lot of people, you know, recently discovered it. You know, the new Call of Duty. I think in our last podcast, we weren't quite sure what it was going to be called, either Modern Warfare 4, Call of Duty Ghost, but now it is official that it's going to be called Call of Duty Ghost, and it's coming out this November on all platforms, and apparently they're going to bring it with a new engine, all new bells and whistles. Now, before me and Dave went on podcast, I said to myself, this is the game that caught me. You know, this is the, the big hitter. You know, they need to make a swing out of this game. You know, if they're going to bring a new engine, that's good, you know. But can your new engine blow walls? Can it break stuff? 
you know, can it look as good as Frostbite? Because mm -hmm. this engine needs to look up to par and up there with Frostbite 3. You know, this new engine needs to bring, it needs to evolve Call of Duty into better product overall. So, you know, this is the last Call of Duty I'm going to freaking support. You know, and this Call of Duty needs to either keep me as a fan or... I'm done with Call of Duty altogether. So, you know, Call of Duty comes out in November. It's called Call of Duty Ghost. We have a brand new engine. Um, and they, and Infinity Ward says they're going to bring some new uh, experience to the Call of Duty brand. And I hope they do. You know, because we, we've been waiting for a true sequel to Call, uh, to Call of Duty since Modern Warfare 2. And that's the last time the game changed up. You know, COD 4 had three kill streaks. And then Modern Warfare 2 bring the care packages and, you know, the 18's kill streaks or whatever. So there hasn't been a big game changer since then. Everything has been copy and paste and copy and paste. So I really want to see uh, Call of Duty Ghost actually really do well and bring some uh, new flavor to the brand. Uh, what do you think, Dave? Um, as far as the uh, trailer is concerned, the I know it's just a tease trailer, but uh, I didn't like it. I saw Ghost, but I didn't see any Bill Murray. So there was no ghost busting going on. Um, which I was disappointed with. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but honestly, as far as the teaser, I didn't like it. Um, no, no, it, was but, just, it wasn't but, gameplay yeah. footage. It was just, you know... You I, know. I understand the teaser is supposed to just kind of just confirm more than anything. Yeah, it was, it's, it was a typical Activision, Call of Duty, you know, real-life teaser. You know, we won't see any gameplay footage until, you know, here it comes. Yeah. Microsoft's, you know, next-gen press conference, <laughs> which is on May 21st. So we also know this now, that next box next console mm -hmm. Xbox 3 what I want to call it is going to be stuck in Activision's uh, you know thing and uh, they're going to have exclusive DLCs for the next uh, five, six Call of Duty for next gen mm -hmm. so yep. we won't see any gameplay until Mark's off and we'll, we'll be covering the Mark's off uh, thing on May 21st on the cover spot I'm, a, I'm gonna go into that. I'm just gonna say I will, I will go into the Microsoft thing open-minded for the fact that I I'll go open-minded yeah, as yeah. a PlayStation gamer. I will go watch that on live and watch it fully, and then give my opinion in our podcast and and, and tell our viewers what I think and what you think. Mm -hmm. about it. Pros and cons. Uh, I'm gonna try exactly. to find some good. And exactly. I can already tell you. There's one thing that I, that I think is good and that I'm. Um, not good. Um, this is kind of going off topic a little bit. Um, they announced the, the whole the the room projector thing that like kind of turns your head. Yeah, I think it's a good idea on paper. It sounds cool and the, the, it looks cool. But what I don't I don't see myself using that because when I play games where that projector's sitting, that's kind of where I sit. That's my spot. You see the projector, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not going to do the Ace Ventura thing where I sit up and you see my head, you know, kind of blocked yeah, out. I, I, think, I think Xbox is trying too many things. I was hurt. I mean, Mac is going to come back. Yeah. So you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea. I know what they're trying to do, but the thing is, it's, it's something I would use. I also heard that achievements would be added on the fly now. Yeah. Um, kind of weird, you I, know? I can see why they have that, but um, something that I really kind of don't care for just for it's not going to really convince me to buy a $500 machine because there's something that PlayStation doesn't you, you, you brag about having achievements man when you, they keep adding stuff you're just like man shit I gotta do this chore again I think achievements on the fly it would be a game changer but how much of a game changer would it be if the game sucks I'm not going to go back just for just you know, you more game pick support. up like a game like Mass Effect 4 maybe and uh, Watch Dogs and then they add like five new achievements up to beat the game on every possible way like are you really going to play replay the game again just for like a couple more achievements so well back to the ghost thing though um I read I can't confirm uh, this is what I hate about rumors and websites man um they said that they're gonna have death streaks and all that good stuff back um I've heard that too they're gonna be bringing back the death streaks you know um I just uh the, you know they're building a game with new engine and uh, we discussed this before we don't want to get on the Call of Duty versus Battlefield thing but it's you know kind of hard to avoid that um I think we're at a time now where people want the destruction, you know? Um, oh, exactly, because it, it really aggravates me, even in all in old Call of Duties, that when you're blowing, like, an RPG at an enemy at a wall or something, that it, it does not, you know, it's... Just... Yeah, and it also... One thing I notice in Call of Duty, in most games, but, you know, Call of Duty, um, it's not just one camper 
but a couple. So they'll have one guy watching the other guy and the other guy, and they're all kind of behind cover. So where if you finally get a good position to see this guy, the yeah. guy over there is going to uh, see you, and you're going to get kills the out. game. Yeah. It so the, the adding destruction eliminates that wall that guy's hiding behind. So it breaks everyone up. And you're back to, you know, that survival instinct. Oh shit, I gotta I run. You gotta move. Yeah. So, you know. destruction, I think, is something they have to add just to get rid of the cappers and get some game flow. I know, you know, sometimes you gotta go in for cover and stuff, but. But I'll tell you what, if, if a pair of missiles coming down and you're in a building and that pair of missiles gonna destroy that building, that's gonna be a big game changer. Mm -hmm. Eliminate the campers. So uh, that's what I want to see go and gone. And quickscope. Oh my god, I hate quickscope. Oh, well, you know what's funny about quickscope is that in Black Ops 1, they had hard scope. You couldn't quickscope in Black Ops 1. Mm -hmm. So when Black Ops 2 came out, they brought back the quickscope, and I said to myself, why? Why you, would you bring that back? You know, after you didn't have it in the previous title. Mm -hmm. So they went backwards from Black Ops 2. They didn't go full. Ghost, ghost, ghost. Um, I just, uh, it, it's an intriguing title, Ghost, because um, the Call of Duty games aren't known for being stealthy. Um, they're more action shoot 'em up. Nothing wrong with that. No, I don't think it's gonna be stealthy. But I mean, you, you throw the name in Ghost, and immediately well, and, and the whole reason why it's called Ghost because it's based on a character named Ghost. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I always thought because I, I, well, I know. Well, because uh, the trailer said like uh, the the ghost warriors or something like that. Well, I know that's one confused. Yeah, yeah, but but there is a character in the franchise yeah. named Ghost. Okay. So I don't know what they're trying to do with this whole. So if it's about the ghost character, then it's cool. I think stability, of course, in a campaign, especially when it's a like a war game like this, um, you need to have people not be confused on who they they are. That's uh, one thing uh, that was weird about um, playing a few shooter games was when they keep kind of throwing you around oh now I'm this guy like wait okay, I'm gonna turn into this guy I'm some other guy um, <laughs> so if it's if it's a one character cool telling the story is a badass if it's ghost implying you know uh, a certain we don't unit, know what the plot is right uh, yeah. yeah we don't know but so, going it can't off be ghost the character it could not be ghost okay um, go, going off of my assumption <laughs> is it's it's ghost like a ghost unit you know you're supposed to move in like ghost in and out um <laughs> If well, that, it ain't Ghost Recon, yeah. man. So it ain't Ghost Recon. If that's what it is, then it's kind of weird to see it coming from a Call of Duty. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to go that way. But at the same time, I, think about this, though. Um, people that play campaigns now are basically kind of your more hardcore guy. Um, so you have the casual guy going into GameStop, you know, with his soror sorority boys. Uh, it's stereotype, I know, just kidding. Um, you know, it's <laughs> like he's showing up there, he's going to get the game pop it go straight into the multiplayer and I feel like the more hardcore guys are the guys going and doing the single player but I found from some of the guys on my friends list that some of those guys that go into single player are guys that like more stealthy games they're more the Sam Fisher guys and that stuff like that you know they like games that take a step back and they can kind of look around first then plan their attack versus okay, and then you call it a ghost you know be able to peek around corners like kind of like Rainbow Six mm -hmm. that's why so I'd be I mean that would fit the whole you know, and you could slide on the ground like in crisis and Battlefield did wait no Battlefield doesn't let you slide does it no, no. I'm thinking thank of god <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> let you dive either that would be fucking hard um the sliding thing I can see it moving to cover quick uh I know but that could promote cheapness at the time done right yeah, but I think there's some vulnerability to that. If you slide in a, like in the middle of a field, I think it's going to take a little bit for your character to get up, get up and move around. Hopefully, that way not everyone's just sliding around all over the place. Like uh, some of that slides, I don't know, like ice skaters. Uh, when I slide in Far Cry, I really you know, it's Far Cry though. It's just, you know, right. Like sliding in uh, Call of Duty title, I don't know, kind of make a weird. All of a sudden, you see like a group of six players hit facing, and then the whole team is sliding to be cheap with shotguns. Oh man, when you put it that way, that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> you No, know, they're all sliding then. They're just using, you know, constantly sliding all over, like how retarded that was. Slide yeah. shotgun. That sounds oh, hey, hey, I got a riot shield, I'm sliding. Oh, tackle surgeon, I'm sliding. Oh, man. So, if they're going to add sliding ability, they're going to have to add a, like a, a stand in a bar, or, uh, you know, 
They're gonna have to make it a, you know, a one-time thing. They're just trying to try and keep that balance. I don't know. I think I think stuff like that. I can see why they want to throw it in realism, you know, whatever. But I, I and a first-person yeah, fast pace. In right? a first-person so. competitive game, you, you want to keep fast pace. You don't want to throw in too many slide no. things. I mean, even even in a slower pace game, like Search and Destroy on uh, hardcore, you know, where you only got that one life. Um, I don't slide around. I mean, I peek around corners and I scope out, you know, the whole area. But I'm not running out sliding behind cover and all that stuff. No. So, I don't know. We'll see. If that slide thing is true. Rapid theory, right? May 21st. You know. Rapid theory. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have anything else to say in this podcast. Uh, aside from... You know, just the Borderlands DLC that you've mentioned. To me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's coming out in June. Yeah, and then the Borderlands 2 DLC is called, uh, what's it called again? I'm not too sure. Uh, Tiny, Tiny Chino's Assault on the Rago Keep or something like that. <laughs> they're gonna have DLC. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna get another DLC, which is good because I have Borderlands 2 myself right. and I love that game. So, hey, more content, more items. Player. Keep bringing it. Yeah, keep the games alive. See, that, that's good. When a game, you know, this by the people who are getting sued right now in Gearbox. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I have too much more. I mean, um, to add, it's been a pretty slow week for games. I mean, that's kind of how it works. Games, so yeah. Now, then we'll pick back up. Then E3 it'll hits. Definitely, it'll definitely hit. You know, then, once, then E3 once, hits, and we're gonna have a podcast. Get end of May going. Once end of May comes around, once we know more about the Xbox and that, that console, and then once it gets close to E3, we're gonna get more news. It's gonna hit. You know, it's gonna hit. It's gonna pick up big time. You know, so. <laughs> All right. I think we're gonna wrap this one up. Hope you guys enjoy this other podcast. Try and make it a weekly thing, like we said before. If you don't know, that's Dave, Sean. After you enjoyed this podcast, if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe. And we'll be back next week with another podcast. And uh, don't uh, feel free to comment. You know, we love to argue. Uh, <laughs> and if we need, if you guys uh, you know, have some topics that we can talk about, um, whether it be current or just something, just something fun. Also, on your other channel, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I do kind of uh, videos, uh, kind of just depending on how I feel, really. There's no consistency just yet. But it's just me talking to the camera. I cover a couple topics. I try to keep it short. You know, that way you guys can go about your day. Have, you know, just wake up. Link will be in the uh, video description. Yep. Um, and the day uh, video, which is also... Yep. Yeah, it's also, you know, that's my PSN ID and my Steam account. Probably shouldn't say that, but we're not popular <laughs> enough to have people want something in front of us, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, um, just check out my channel if you guys want. Or I honestly really enjoy the podcast, so either one, um, it's it's almost the same thing. I just love gaming so much, and if you hear my opinion on here, it's gonna basically sound exactly the same over there. So there there'll be a few. I try to. I'm trying to find articles to split, so that way I have something there and something. There. Well, yep. so that's all for the, today, guys. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the podcast. So it's kind of short. You know, not much news to talk about. We'll get some more news out in the next week or so. Um, which we're also thinking about doing a little verse podcast where we talk about, you know, two games head to head, two products head to head. So look out for our versus podcast and our regular news podcast. So that's Dave. I'm Sean, and we'll check you next week. Peace. Peace.